Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. Today's video is going to be actually from a question. Thank you, Ann Tracy, for this question. And I thought, you know what, let's make a whole video just about this question. Um, if I can summarize, basically Ann asks, Mr. Hino, if my students come up to me and say something's wrong with this program, it's not working, what are my steps or process to go through and, and possibly have them I mean, that's the ultimate goal is help them figure out what the problem is. But what is my kind of uh, process on taking them through that issue? So you're going to have to stay with me to figure out that process. So when my students come up to me and say, Miss, you know, something's not working, I usually want to back up and go, whoa, I'm not going to dive in there unless, you know, it's near the end of the period or I'm super tired. It kind of depends on my mood. But, you know, usually I'll have my students, I'll ask them questions to let them figure this out. It's a process where I don't even like them coming up to me and telling me something work, did not work unless, you know, it's... I don't want them sitting there for a few days. Usually I'll ask them some questions and then have them figure it out for themselves. But let's take a look at a robot and go through this process. Okay, so I'm here with this robot. I've been teaching robotics. This is my fifth year now. And I would say, wow, depending on the project, um, I mean, if it's just a robot like this, I mean, we do projects like the Gyro Boy and other things. So the problems can vary depending on what project you're doing. But if it's just a regular robot like this, I would say the percentage is huge. I would say 80% of the problems are going to come um, from the cables, actually, believe it or not. Um, the cables are either, I mean, they're in BC, but maybe they put them into AB or, you know, CD, something like that. Um, or, you know, they're, they're just not plugged in all the way. I mean, anytime your robot does like this, when you start the program, that means it's usually a cable. One of the cables is in, one's not. Um, it can be a sensor cable. So without, you know, getting my hands on the robot and actually looking at it, I'll say, okay, so it's not moving. And I'll take a look at their program and say, okay, it's supposed to be going forward but it's not. Let's see where your program has your motor cable supposed to be in. So I'll just have them check their program and they'll, hopefully they can say, well, it has BC. And then usually they'll look and see that they're either, if it's not, um, you know, if they have them in the right spot, maybe they need to plug them in. So I'll say, are your cables plugged in? So it'll be one of those things where we just look at the cables first. So if you're wondering where my first direction is, I just have them check the program and then check their cables. Okay, secondly, if it's a project, like we have the robot arm, we have the puppy, we have the color sorter, and we have uh, the gyro boy, um, with these projects, especially the gyro boy, I mean, look how many cables are getting plugged in. All four sensors and three of the motors. I'll have them come over here. And that's the first thing I ask them to do. I say, I don't even look at their, you know, cables. I'll say, go to port view and make sure everything's plugged in correctly. So that is a huge uh, percentage of the problem is still the cables but with the project, they have to come over here and check to make sure their cables are in the right spot. Depending on, um, again, the robot that you're building, a lot of times you'll get a low percentage of problems that occur um, with just something silly. I, one year I had uh, students, they put their two wheels on a single axle and then were asking me, Mr. You know, how come our robot doesn't turn? And it took us a while to figure out that it wasn't turning because when one wheel wanted to turn or, you know, go forward and the other one wanted to go backwards, it can't do that if it was on a single axle. So you're going to get a percentage of problems where, you know, it's not going to be the cables. It won't be gears or the motor. 
It would be something where, you know, that it would be hidden. We actually had to turn the robot over and then figure out, oh, there's your problem with the axles. Um, so your problems can occur from anywhere. Um, with, we did a flower project um, and one team's motor was going backwards. So we kind of knew right there and then that they had put their gear on the wrong side. So uh, hopefully you're lucky enough to have a class that, you know, where they're working on the same project where I tell, I tell my students, go look at other students' projects and see if yours looks the same or your gears on the same side. So it's one of those things where I hope you're in a class where they can compare their project to another project.